out, you know, and, and everything so we can continue this uh, 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 building of this team. And you reset the market with Zeke. You got to think Dak, is, you know, Dak is, should be next and then it's Amari. But you got to think Dak now really is thinking, OK, <laughs> that 40 is back on the table. Amari is going to be sitting there. Now, Amari, I think, you know, maybe a little bit different because uh, he came in mid part of the season. So I don't know if they're going to tell tell him to uh be like, hey, prove it to us. Maybe that is, and they'll talk to him at the end of the season. But you got to be thinking the other two guys are looking at like, well, well, hold on. we That's not a top five deal. That's a top one deal. I want to, you know, top one, top two maybe. Is that going to impact the negotiations for Dak Prescott and Amari Cooper going forward? To see, Zach, uh, to see Zeke got his money. Could it be? Possibly. Will it be? Probably not. And that's just me right now, you know, speaking on it. I could change my mind. I could feel different, you know, about it, you know, later on. But we know, I just talked about it. Zeke is what makes this whole machine go. And maybe that's what they're going to sell them on. Uh, maybe they're going to sell them on, the, you know, the, you know, the extension. I don't know. Maybe yeah, I, I would think that Zeke will be around once when that extension kicks in. But they're not going to be worried about that. They're just going to be worried about what is my number. And then the Cowboys, let's just, let's just be honest. Uh, some other teams might be upset, but they can't be too upset because there aren't any other players that are like Z. Now there's quarterbacks, so they may have a problem there. There's wide receivers, so they possibly have a problem there. But I really would like to know what Dak and Amari's uh, agents are probably saying at, at this point. Are we going back to the table? Will Dak play out his contract he said before earlier uh before the season started before well tomorrow will be the season starting but he said earlier uh that he didn't mind or he had no problem playing out his contract because obviously he's going to bet on himself to try and get that additional money could the dallas cowboys actually afford to pay three guys to reset the market now julio is supposed to be uh, having his deal probably done in the next day or two, uh, you know, before week one actually kicks off for the Atlanta Falcons. So is it something as similar as that? Is is, is Amari and I'm waiting maybe on Julio so then they can reset the market at this point? I think of the two, though, if, if I got to pick, I, I told you don't be surprised if that got 20, 25, 27 million. But at this point where he's at, in the negotiation and what they're trying to do, he possibly could get close to that 40. I don't think he'll get 40, but I think he could get close to that to that 40. In the Wait a Minute Show chat room, I, and I'm going here, you know, and I'm hitting it up. Clutch says, uh, Dak and Amari won't reset the market, in my humble opinion. And you could be right, Clutch. I mean, you, you got to think they have to, you logically have to think that they have to stop somewhere. Amari, I don't think at all. I, I don't, I mean, Amari is a, is a heck of a talent. Don't get me wrong, but guys like DeAndre Hopkins, guys like Julio, those guys, uh, uh, um, those guys, and I'm not trying to be disrespectful to anyone. But those guys could have consistently been one of the top premier wide receivers with Derek Carr. Now, I know things happen, you know, in Oakland and all this stuff. But I just think for you to be the highest paid, I mean, you're on a Antonio Brown 
Uh, he had Big Ben, don't get me wrong, but to be on that level, I mean, it, it's 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 very unique. So that's why I just don't think uh, Amari will be resetting the market. That could possibly, uh, especially if they win the Super Bowl, definitely he will be resetting the market because he will be just sitting down. He'll slide his paper across and say, that's what I'm signing for. I don't want to talk about anything else. So, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, you listen to the Wait a Minute Show once again. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to take a break, and then when we come back from the break, uh, we'll get into more football talk. Uh, actually, we'll touch base on some college football. I know everybody's excited about that over this past weekend. And then we'll still get back into NFL talk. We got hard knocks. And then we actually have the very first, very first NFL football game for the 2019 season that's going to be going down. So we're going to discuss that and more and your comments in the Wait a Minute Show chat room. So we'll be back after these words. Hey, what's up, everybody? I am Vince Wright, the sports governor, and you know me from the Sports Done Right show. But when I'm not doing Sports Done Right, I'm in the executive mansion chilling with the Wait a Minute show. That's right, Jelani, Lopan, indeed. Keep it tuned here, y'all. The Wait a Minute Show. My name is Vince Wright, and I approve this message. Attention all sports fans. If you're someone who wakes up each morning with list of sporting events to go along with your to-do list for the day, then you just might be a diehard. The world of sports is as vast as the ocean is deep, including the major leagues, the minor leagues, the college, and everything in between. This is me, Bart Larry B of IE Sports Radio, welcoming you to join me every Monday evening at 4 p.m. Pacific, 7 p.m. Eastern on The Defining Moment, a show that focuses on what really matters in the sports world, sports themselves, and nothing outside of them. Once again, tune in for The Defining Moment with me, Bart Larry B every Monday evening at 4 p.m. Pacific, 7 p.m. Eastern on IE Sports Radio, right here on Spreaker.com. We'll see you then. Being good at life means getting your finances together so you can focus on the moments that matter most. With over 170 years of expertise, New York Life Insurance Company provides you with benefits you can enjoy while you're, well, living. So give me, Doug Stewart, your local New York Life agent, a call. I can help you build a solid financial future to help you and your family be good at life. You can reach me at 678-770-8073 or... Look for me at NewYorkLife.com. Do you want your next Atlanta event to be memorable? If so, have Drink and Color at your next function. Drink and Color is sophisticated bartending that creates signature cocktails for your special occasion. While your family, friends, and business associates next time with Drink and Color. You can contact the owner, KT Lewis, at 678-813-713. 7102. That's 678-813-7102. You can also email her at color at gmail.com and follow her on Instagram at drinkincolor. And tell her you were referred by the Wait a Minute Show. Drink in Color. Cocktail catering. Let the cocktail sparkle at your next event. Ladies and gentlemen, we are back and you are listening to It's the Wait a Minute Show Woo-hoo! on X Squad Radio Network. So we are back uh, from the break. I told you uh, we were going to get into a little bit of college football uh, and we'll do that right now. And I, myself, here being in Atlanta, um, am quite excited in mentioning this bit of information, you know, uh, now I'm not going to, you know, rah, rah, as if I'm just, you know, one of the forefathers or anything, but we had a pretty big upset that went down, uh, in college football this past weekend. And no, it was not, you know, a ranked team, but it is a big time school. Uh, and, and let's just all be honest that these games to start off, uh, the, the college football season, we all know they they, they size these uh, little schools up or these schools that, you know, don't have 
you know, a, a football program as advanced as, you know, some of the SECs, the Big Ten, the Pac-12 and all this stuff. And they pay them, you know, to basically show up to be slaughtered. But every so often we get one slip up. And unfortunately, it came at the expenses of one of my teams in the past, which was the Michigan Wolverines and a little town. I shouldn't say little, but a team by the name of Appalachian State came into the big house and embarrassed my Wolverines. That happened to the Tennessee Volunteers this past weekend. And that was to the tune of 38 to 30, which was by by the. I'm sorry. That was 38 to 30. I'm a little excited, but that was at the hands of Georgia State. The Georgia State Panthers beat Tennessee 38 to 30. uh, And that is a game where Georgia State was 25 point underdogs. Man, Lopan, you told me to put some money on that. Yeah, and I didn't. I'm sorry. But uh, yeah, Tennessee lost 38 to 30. They were 25 point favorite. Uh, And and this was a bad loss for the Tennessee Volunteers. Uh, It happens, you know, like I said, every so often these games uh, actually are close or, you know, a team does show up. But it just shows that Tennessee probably took Georgia State lightly. They probably hadn't seen these guys play. Georgia State is not a horrible team. They got some guys that have come from Georgia State that sit in the NFL at, at this moment that they're playing. So, They have some talent on their team. But in this game, uh, the biggest thing really was the fourth quarter. Uh, Georgia State did stay consistent. They scored in every uh, every quarter. Excuse me. I got a little bit of sniffles. And and Tennessee fell off where they had a good first quarter. They put up 14 points. But then after that, it was field goal city for the next uh, two quarters after that going. And and there wasn't any halftime adjustments, you know, that seems like – what normally a team would do. They would come out and and if the game was close, then they would put their foot, let's just say, they would put their foot down on the team and then blow them out in the second half. And that did not happen. And one of the things of of why it didn't happen was the rushing game by uh, Georgia State. That they won the time of possession, although it was only by, you know, uh, mere seconds. But a run game can tire out a defense and that's exactly what Georgia State did. Uh, they led 213 yards, so only 93 yards uh, by Tennessee. They had to get back into the game with passing, which they did. They passed for over 300 yards. But uh, running the ball, time of possession, and then also the biggest thing is is that although they didn't lose all of it, uh, all of the possessions, but turnovers. You know, they had four fumbles and two of them that they lost. And I don't care who you playing. Uh, it, it, at some point, when you have so many turnovers it can come back and bite you in the butt. And that's exactly what it did for the Tennessee Volunteers. Now, there is going to be some problems on campus. They probably are going to be talking about fire the coach and, you know, and all this stuff. Uh, I think cooler heads will prevail. They'll come out next week. They'll put a beat down on a team uh, that they are seeing next week. I don't even know who they play, but it doesn't matter. I want to give props to Georgia State. And the reason, and I didn't even say this, the reason is because I spent, you know, you know, uh, I was there a hot second, but I attended Georgia State uh, University, so I always cheer for the Panthers, and, you know, that's where I met my future other half. So I do have a little place near and dear in my heart for Georgia State. Uh, The basketball team, you know, they did a few things back in the day getting into the tournament, but this football program, uh, you have to give them credit for what they've done because the Georgia State football has not been around. I think it's only really been been around maybe 10 years at this point. I think they're around 10 or 11 years that the program has been around. So they didn't even have a football program not too long ago. And for them to build their program the way that they have, and they have guys into the NFL that's playing representing the Georgia State Panthers and then to go into Tennessee into Nashville to beat the Tennessee Volunteers you got to give that team credit and you got to give them kudos for what uh what they did so shouts out to the Georgia State Panthers for handling business uh and beating down the Tennessee Volunteers uh now we had that but we also had it was transfer time basically in the uh in the uh, NCAA this past uh, Saturday and uh, Saturday and Sunday, actually, because, again, we were doing the, you know, the Labor Day weekend thing and two guys that transfer and have really, 
really open up some eyes for some for some people to take a look at. Uh, one is Justin Fields. Now, Justin Fields was at uh, 